So um, my name's Colin Murphy. I work at Adobe. That's what I looked like before COVID. <laughs> um, this, is a, this is a customer story. And uh, it's, it's a little different because I've, I've given this sort of talk to a lot of people at Adobe. And I have to kind of talk for 20 minutes about what WebAssembly is. Um, and so kind of trying to invert it. Um, I've also like been aggressively pruning as the day goes and people cover things that I would have covered. Um, I also want to set your expectations low. And uh, I don't want to do too good of a job uh, because Ranu, he gets really stressed out. So um, you know, don't want, don't want to set you guys up for failure. Um, all right, so, so this, is the, this is the biggest hurdle. Is, is just like, well, you know, what's WebAssembly, right? And, and you, you kind of get, you know, Adobe, I don't know, if you've all, I'm assuming you've all heard of it. It's a pretty big company. Um, it's not like, you know, Microsoft or something, but um, there's a lot of, there's a lot to it. Um, and it's hard to kind of come at people with how application, what applications should look like, how we're going to compose applications. Um, because where they're, where they're coming from, if they're front end, right, then they're thinking, oh, I know WebAssembly, and, and they don't, right, not in the context of WASI and all that. Um, they're back end, and they're like, well, I know Docker, and, you know, I don't want to, you know, don't, don't bother me, right? Um, I just want to write my JavaScript, my Java, my, you know, my uh, Spring Boot apps. Um, is, so it's kind of like Docker, and it's like, it's not really like Docker. And then Edge Compute's still really early on. Um, and so, but, but I think that's kind of the whole point is that you have to kind of consider it as a way of composing an application, really, from beginning to end. Um, so, um, yeah, so let's, let's keep going. So, so Web, WebAssembly is already used quite a bit at Adobe. And um, if any of the higher ups at Adobe ever learn about this thing called CNCF and that there's this KubeCon thing, I'm not really, I'm really going to kind of cover my tail here. And I'm not going to go into how we use WebAssembly too much. Um, so sorry if that's what you're here for. Um, and that's also because I'm, I'm not a C++ engineer. I only recently became a front end engineer. Um, I actually was responsible for Document Cloud's infrastructure and developer experience um, for the microservices. So Adobe Sign, Acrobat, um, kind of how Kubernetes was laid out, how people did CI, CD, uh, what their Spring Boot apps looked like, all that kind of, there was a lot to it. Um, and uh, I, I recently switched over to Creative Cloud Web, um, kind of a career lim limiting move perhaps. Um, but I'm, a, I'm now just like a, a sub-average uh, JavaScript developer. Um, and uh, um, sorry. So, so there is a lot going on in C++. There's, 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 there's the, we've worked with the Chrome team. I'm using we loosely there. Um, there's actually some really great, um, uh, great write-ups about this kind of stuff. So there were um, dynamic threads, uh, dynamic threads with pthreads, simd instructions, um, performance optimized storage from origin private fi file system. There was a lot of work done in order to get Photoshop working in the browser. So I don't know if you all are aware, but there's Photoshop in the browser now. Um, Acrobat um, has, uh, if you use the web version of Acrobat, then uh, you'll see there, there, well, you would, there is a lot of WebAssembly there as well. And, and, but really the whole purpose of WebAssembly in the front end uh, for Adobe is we have a lot of C++ code. We've had a lot of C++ code for decades. And we want to use that in the browser, right? We want to have good browser experiences. But that's not really applicable because none of that stuff's going to work, right? In, a, in WASI, none of that stuff's going to work um, without, without that JavaScript uh, calling the, making the system calls. Um, but kind of the nice thing is at Adobe, we have a really positive um, appreciation for WebAssembly. If you say WebAssembly, you know, that, that gives really high, uh, high, High marks. People like like the term. Rates highly. Um, for server side, everything's on Kubernetes, um, for better or worse. Um, and and there's not a lot of kind of these big epic engineering challenges. At least that, at least that were enough to keep me interested. Um, and so um, so so now I'm a JavaScript developer. Um, so yeah. So the story kind of where the story begins is. Uh, Adobe Sign, 
Uh, about a year ago, I started really working in earnest on how we were going to do microservices in FedRAMP. And that would probably be a great KubeCon talk all in and of itself, but the, the, right, right before we started our real auditing uh, of our application, the FedRAMP standard changed, and now any CVE at all, any, of any rating, had to be reported to our sponsor. And so, um, I don't know if you, I don't know if anybody here has run Kubernetes, but uh, you end up using a lot of third party images, and uh, if you're fairly sophisticated, you have lots of controllers, and you know, you've, you've, uh, you think you've done a great job, covered all your bases, and you end up with thousands of CVEs. Um, and you'll have one libc vulnerability from you know, 2013 that nobody thinks is important. That'll get flagged in uh, Ubuntu, Red Hat, and maybe Alpine, so they've got, that's three CVEs right there that no one has ever, any intention of, of ever fixing. Um, so, so you're going to, it's going to be difficult for you to get through a FedRAMP audit if you use lots of Docker images. You actually have three options. One, you can start paying people money. So if you use Istio, you can start paying uh, Solo IO a bunch of money. Um, or maybe not too much, but it can get pricey. Um, and uh, you can fork all of these third-party projects, which is a lot of fun. Um, or you can just cut them out altogether, and that's really what we were faced with. And it was, it was painful. Um, and it's kind of still painful. Um, so, so anyway, I'm, I'm, you know, we're kind of reaching the end of our challenges. This CVE thing is terrible, and so I'm, I'm just kind of looking around and seeing like, what, what's, the, what's the successor to Docker? What's the successor to Kubernetes? Um, and, um, and so I kind of, I, I started, you know, I got into WebAssembly. Uh, started looking at WebAssembly. And I, kind of, I set out to say, well, could I take a microservice that's actually used in production, a simple one, um, and could I make it into WebAssembly, and could I deploy it on the client, on the edge, and the server? And, and I just kind of, on this slide, I, I added this like arrow. It's like, you know, at this point, everything's moving this way. I'm sure someday it'll move back, or maybe it'll converge in the middle, but we're trying to get a lot of functionality for that data locality. Bailey said it better, whatever. Um, <laughs> it's good to have stuff here. Um, so, um, um, and, and you know, this is kind of the problem we've had. I think we've said it before. We, I was talking about Heroku earlier, right? Is, or Java, JavaScript, Unix wars, right? Glibc, right? We want stuff that can be, can be used in lots of different places. Um, and that's, that's like, well, this is kind of the ideal, right? I, software developers, they, write, they know, understand the business logic, and then they don't have to worry about how it gets deployed or, or, or what, the, what it, um, all, the, all the things they don't have to care about, right? Um, and that's kind of what we've been doing here for Platform for a while. Um, yeah, so, so this is kind of like, so I'll get there. I'm going to demo that. Um, uh, but, so what, this is kind of my initial impression. I'm like, okay, WebAssembly. So I don't have to have the, um, I don't have to have the operating system that's in Docker, right? Um, I can have it be really fast. It's gonna be much better than, I mean, I'm comparing it to the JVM. I'm comparing it to Spring Boot. So it's, it's a low bar, right? Um, in terms of startup time, say, or memory footprint. Um, and also compliance is really big. We're, everything is, you know, we had a lot of HIPAA, FedRAMP, SOC2, PCI. Um, so these were kind of like, okay, this is going to be great. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do this, and maybe we can just run it. You know, like maybe we can start moving people over. Um, and oh yeah, and of course, right is uh, the spend. <laughs> so so we uh, once again, you know. Somebody at Adobe might find out about this conference. Um, and I'm actually kind of like, you know, you like it's, it's kind of tongue in cheek because we, we do get a lot, I do get that question fairly often. What is CNCF, you know? Um, so, uh, but it's a lot and I can't say how much it is, but it's a lot. Um, okay, so this is what I did. I, uh, we have this uh, really simple Java Spring Boot app that you give it an image and it, uh, removes the background. Um, not too hard, I'm sure you guys can figure out how it's kind of done, but um, very trivial. Um, and then, uh, and I just wanted to see, 
if I could, if I could run it. Uh, I did, I did Fastly, Cloudflare, uh, browser, and server side. So, time for demo. Uh, so, so actually, at first, I'm just going to play a video because then, um, because uh, it's actually going to run. It's actually going to run inside. Um, I'm mean, going to as I move it over. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right. Didn't want. And okay. So uh, Mac. <laughs> what was that? Um, that was awful. What have to click click. Okay. All right. So. So here we go. Um, so this is actually going to run inside uh, inside Kubernetes, which is pretty cool. So this runs inside our actual like Adobe Kubernetes. Um, so I've I've written I've written out this business logic, and I'm just going to import it into Wasm Cloud. I picked Wasm Cloud. This was a year ago. Um, it's been good. Um, so yeah, not pretty much. I'm just calling it, and then I'm returning some HTML. There's nothing. Kind of like how how easy it is. It actually was so overall really easy. Um, and then I did Cloudflare and Fastly. They were also fairly easy just to import my Rust, have it compiles to a Wasm. So Fastly, of course, actually is Wasm time. Cloudflare is V8. Um, didn't really make much of a difference. And it's kind of artifacty. All right, so. Let's see. Let's see if I actually start doing it now. Okay, good. All right, so we had to pick a signature. Uh, this is kind of a tradition since we or since this app was originally written that we pick a signature of sufficient complexity for the contour tracing. Um, and so this one is actually running. This is actually running live in uh, in a in a Kubernetes cluster used by Adobe. So. That was actually, it actually takes a lot of work, and I'll show Taylor's uh, network diagram at some point, how that works. Um, so yeah, and then uh, now going on to Cloudflare, I believe. I go on to Cloudflare. Pretty quickly. I'm not gonna mess with it. Okay. And then, yeah. All right, so that's Cloudflare. So this is Cloudflare. It's actually running. I probably shouldn't have done this, but this is actually running on Cloudflare. Um, same thing. Pick the image, loaded it up, and it's going to remove the background. And yeah. Kind of slow. It's like one and a half. Okay. Um, so yeah, so really not hard. Uh, pretty easy. Once you get the, once you write your app, you can run it on Wasm Cloud in Kubernetes. You can run it on Cloudflare, and then, um, then actually that's the end. And then I, uh, so so what actually what happened was this got put into the product, and so like the next thing is showing the uh, beta version of the product. I can't show. So um, so I'll just I I uh, will. Very quickly. Um, feels not very impressive. It, it, was, it was impressive to some people, let's just say. Um, and so, uh, let's see, I'm going to bring up my. Oh, so, yeah, try to bring the terminal over. Um, it might be small, sorry. Um, yes. Localhost 8000, localhost 8000. So it's gonna. I'm gonna drop it in. 
going to drop the image in. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can drag and drop. And I, oh, where are they? It's not going to let me do it. Okay. I might have to not do this. I don't understand Mac oh, OS X is kind of, or whatever. Mac OS is kind of killing me here. Can't drag a, dra drag a something into a. Well, good thing this isn't a Mac demo, because it's failing. Um, oh, I'm crying out loud. <laughs> really? Come on. Drag and drop. Drag and drop. OK. Oh, for crying. OK. If you drag and drop, you get the same response. So it works in all three places. Really? Like, I guess I need to bring a mouse next time. Thanks, trackpad. OK. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. If you could drag and drop in a UI, then I could show you that I can drag and drop this file. Oh, yeah. Thanks. OK. Well, you can't. You can't, because Mac can't, Mac can't handle this. This is good. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. All right. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, if I could drag and drop, it would do the same thing. Um, and I, I don't know what happened now. OK, so excessive memory, OK. All right. Um, all right, moving on. So that's, that's, that's a demo. And that was actually pretty cool. And of course, I showed this to people, and they're like, oh, we can just run it in the browser, great. And that's, that's, that's what most people took out of that. Um, but, um, and it actually did, it actually is going to be put into the product to replace something you'll never notice. But, um, so now that will be done in the browser. Um, next demo. Next demo. I was afraid this was going to be too short. So that's where we are. Um, now it's excruciatingly long. Um, all right. So next thing was, um, uh, Cloudflare has this thing, this, this kind of, it's, this Cloudflare, I was really impressed with, uh, this um, was a, uh, it is hard to type up here. All right, local, okay, yeah, Whew. all right. Um, Cloudflare, oh wait, um, has, Cloudflare has durable objects, and this was a big thing that I was interested in, because when I was joining my team, it was about, you know, collaborative editing and stuff like that. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to see what collaborative editing is, editing is like. And, um, and so what you could do, I thought this was really cool, is you can, uh, they have these things called durable objects. I don't know if you all know about this, but you just instantiate a JavaScript class uh, in Cloudflare, and it will hold on to the state of an object really super low latency. And so um, if I go over to Safari, which I had up five seconds ago, uh, then um, so right, so if I, yeah. Okay, so here we go, two browsers. And um, I thought this was cool. So if I open up this, and, and what, what's really cool, right, from an application perspective is that this is actually happening in Valencia, right? So I, I do something in one, it affects the other. Um, so it's webhooks. I've got a se session with Cloudflare. I've got webhooks sending down so you, people can co-edit, right? And I thought this was really powerful, and this is really tiny, and this is Rust and WebAssembly. Um, so that was, that was also really cool. And um, it was before I joined the team, so it has no, nothing to do with it, what Adobe actually does. I thought that was really cool. And then um, the last one is, um, the last one is um, Christoph uh, Bruving. He was here yesterday, but he's from BMW, and he came up with a Wasm Cloud uh, Onyx and uh, TensorFlow inference. Um, and so that actually is something, when I was going around, I'm not gonna, um, I was talking to people, and they're like, well, you know, we have this really heavy compute thing that sounds like it would be good for WASM, right? And it's like, well, you know, <laughs> actually multiprocessing not so great in WASM, so no. And the other one was, well, we've got these, these, all these machine learning models. 
can we run them on the edge? And like, it's kind of the answer is no, right? Um, but, but that's really a compelling, that's probably the most compelling use case is right here. Because let's say, actually, if you have, um, if you have Acrobat on your phone and you open a PDF, it will actually run, a, run, it, run it through a machine learning in, uh, inference and it will reposition the text and images. And it'll all show up nicely on your phone. But the problem is that um, you need to have a nice phone for that to work for you. And if you don't have a nice phone, um, hopefully this is okay um, to mention, you know, sometimes that has to be done somewhere else. So that has to be done on server side. So if you could run it all at the edge in all the major cities around the world, that would be a big, big uh, win, right? And so, um, so, uh, so this is, so I don't know, BMW must need it for cars or something, but we, you know, Adobe and probably lots of people like Adobe could really take advantage of this, um, if that makes any sense. And, um, okay, so. So, the, the, so this particular one is we, we give it an image and uh, it spits out a content authenticity fingerprint of an image. So, um, so it's going to spin this up, and I'm going to give it an image, and it's going to give me a fingerprint if everything goes well. Live demos. Okay. Yeah, and that's what it's going to give me. <laughs> Hopefully. All right, there it goes. Okay, cool. So, so there we go. So that's actually running machine inference on my local host, but that's, that's the kind of thing we need is to be able to run Onyx models or TensorFlow models uh, at the edge. Um, of course, it's not running at the edge. It's running on my laptop, but same idea. So that, that really, the, and, and the problem we're really trying to solve there is that, uh, you have an Onyx model or a TensorFlow model. It's too big for a good browser experience, and there's too much latency if it goes all the way to a server halfway around the world. So that's, um, so those are the demos. I'll try to get PowerPoint back up here. Let's see. Okay. Um, so yeah, and so that last one I, I didn't have much to do with. That was, uh, that was uh, Christopher Bruving and uh, Steve Schotler from uh, Steve Schotler from Cosmonic, who did most of that. But that was a actual Adobe use case. Um, so yeah, so so pretty quickly, and this is something you know, if you have customers, if you're writing a platform and you have customers, things to make sure they understand, right? So um, if they've got stuff working in V8, it doesn't, it's not a, it's not going to necessarily, it's probably not going to work in WASI. Um, and then there was all these things like, oh, well, here's an image, here's some, some machine learning, could you run that? Here's some, here's uh, just a simple um, image manipulation Tesseract library. Nope, right, no, it doesn't work. Um, the other big thing is uh, there's no doubt, right, that, WASM, that a WASI-based workload is gonna run much faster than Java. But you know what else runs much faster than Java, especially in starting up? Anything else, and yet people use it, right? <laughs> and, right? I mean, people still use Java in Docker containers at a massive scale. So the whole, like, well, it's going to be faster and cheaper and, you know, you're going to save money doesn't, for, you know, doesn't work. It's not a valid argument. Um, and so, um, <laughs> so you have to kind of, like, next level, right? Like, well, it's going to let you do things you couldn't do before. Because, um, you know, the thing is, if you have hundreds or thousands of engineers and they all write Java, that's gonna take a really, it's gonna, you have to save a lot of money to make it worth retraining thousands of people. Um, and, you know, and so, so the whole single threaded, single threaded WASI, um, not great. Like not, uh, I know that we kind of got it working in the browser with the dynamic threads, but sooner the better on, on how to kind of get around that problem. Um, and also the other big thing is that it's, it doesn't, it's a major, major shift in thinking. So, um, and of course, it has to work in Kubernetes because that's what people run, right? Um, until you have something where 
where, we, you know, really next level where it's like, well, it's in the data center and it's everywhere, right? It's in your, you know, local cell tower. Um, people are going to want it to run in Kubernetes. Um, and so this is from Taylor. I don't know if Taylor's still here. Thanks, Taylor. Thanks for this diagram, Taylor. Um, but it's hard. It's, it's a lot. And, um, but actually what's really cool here in Wasm Cloud, if you notice, um, is that you can connect to AWS resources. Um, so that's, a, that's another must have, right? AWS and Azure, Microsoft people, um, make sure that, you know, have some sort of identity uh, system. Okay. Um, but, you know, the really compelling things, again, um, isolation of workloads, no host operating system. Um, we're going to be running, people are going to be running, hundred, you know, we run hundreds of thousands of VMs. Um, it has to run in corporate accounts, right? Corporate data centers, I, uh, AWS, Azure, has to have some sort of identity tie-in. So we actually, for um, FedRAMP, we had to use, we, we went with Spiffy um, for certain identities. Um, that kind of thing. Like, people have spent a lot of time and money working on solving problems with this stuff. So it has to still use this stuff. Um, and of course, the machine learning, super, super important. Because companies have spent a lot of money on machine learning. I don't know if you noticed, you know, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of work being done on machine learning, and, sometime, you know, and sometimes it pays off. Um, and so they want to keep that stuff. Um, and once again, um, I know Bailey started us off with, like, people have this misconception about Rust, but it's like, yeah, if you were going to start Greenfield, you should write in Rust. Um, we, obviously, Adobe uses C++ for all of its WebAssembly, but... Um, and then the other thing is that, for reasons that I don't really quite understand, but I have pretty good ideas about, um, the large, you know, infrastructure as a service providers are, are a little behind the eight ball on this stuff. Um, I think it's because you have these different silos, and, you know, going back to the first slide, right, it's, it's a lot of stuff kind of converging in one place, and so at these big, you know what I mean, these big cloud vendors, They've got lots of silos, and it, it's really, well, is it Lambda at Edge, right? Is it Lambda, is it the IoT people, right? I don't know if they, those people talk to each other, but, um, so I think there's a real opportunity for a lot of you here to, uh, to challenge, um, to, you know, to really carve a niche here, um, and, uh, and, you know, take care of that. Uh, take advantage of the portability, make something that's really um, everywhere at one time. Um, so, um, what time? Am I about done? 5.15? Um, so, so, yeah, so uh, anyway, to sum it up, edge workers, um, I'm, I, I think this is really, the time is now, this stuff's really ready to go. I think you're gonna see a lot of people using this enough very soon, if, you know, they already are, but um, I think you're gonna see it hit the top of the uh, adoption curve. Um, uh, especially as they kind of turn up the compute. Right. Uh, right now, it's still pretty compute limited, but they can, once they can make it a little more powerful, um, then there's going to be a lot of adoption. Um, I really like durable objects. I know it's not going to work at an open source conference, but um, I guess uh, the way it would work is durable objects are good. Let's make an open source version of them. How about that? Um, uh, server side WebAssembly, um, I think. I mean, so, so yeah, so it works for the really trivial cases, and it's kind of, it's gonna work really soon for more complex cases, but it's still, um, it's still kind of challenging. Um, I think, I think eventually it's gonna be its own platform, it's people aren't gonna be running in Kubernetes, um, because I, as we, as we all know, it doesn't play well with Kubernetes. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, this was true a year ago, it's, it's less true now, um, uh, but, uh, but I'm really looking forward to the future of, uh, of kind of a seamless experience. I think we, the last talk kind of talked about that. So, uh, and it's definitely going to be, it's definitely going to be a thing. Um, Wasm will be a major player on the server side. Uh, for what, you know, that's my two cents. All right, so that is all. Thank you very much. Never mind. Any questions? No?